How great would it be to get up close and personal with the beauty industry heroes we love and admire and to ask them, how did you learn to do what you do? I'm Chris Barron, a hairstylist and educator for 40 plus years, and I'm inviting all our heroes to chat and share the secrets of their success. Well, welcome to Head Cases, and I'm particularly excited about today's guest, and here's why. I don't think I've ever had somebody on Head Cases before that was, catch this, a 10-time Emmy-nominated hairstylist, also a four-time Guild-awarded winning hairstylist. She is the key hairstylist and department head hairstylist for, catch this, The Voice, uh, Shark Tank, Lip Sync Battle, Legendary, VMA, and that's just to name a few of them. She's also had film credits, including Protecting the King, Out of the Woods, and Fielder's Choice. Uh, She is a hair thinning and hair loss expert. She's an educator for uh, for Xenogen and uh, an author of The Five F Words to Manifesting Your Life. So let's give it up for this week's head case, Geraldine Stevens. Jerry Lynn, it is an absolute, absolute pleasure to have you on here, and I cannot wait to chat about things, because you've got a side of your business that I've never been involved with, so I just want to say first off, welcome. It's great to have you here. Oh, thanks, Chris. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, that's awesome. Well, so listen, I mean, what I want to do first off is, and this is the way I usually start to, uh, to go with all of them, is that I just want to, half the time people just want to know. How, what's the connection? How did you get into the hair industry? What's your story? Did, did like did you start in something else and then you ended up here? What was your story? How did how did you start into hair? Well, um, growing up, my mom was a hairstylist and uh-huh. she actually didn't work in a salon for very long. She uh, would kitchen cut, you know, all of our hair, hair and perms, and you know, back in the eighties and stuff. And um, I kind of always in the back of my head kept um, thinking that maybe being a hairstylist would be something I'd want to do. But I moved to Seattle in 1991. I was 21. And I started bartending and um, yeah, just getting into that lifestyle, staying up all night, basically. And it was Mm -hmm. the 90s in Seattle, which was um, a thing. And, um, so when I was about to turn 25, I decided like, I didn't, I knew I didn't want to be a bartender the rest of my life. So, um, I mean, it was great, but, um, yeah, so I went to beauty school and one of my girlfriends decided to go to, uh, be an esthetician. So we went to school together. And when we were in beauty school, her, she was dating a, uh, grip, which is, uh, someone who works in the film industry. And in the 90s, uh, LA brought a lot of films up to Seattle. So I got to walk on to set. It, I remember it was a Kevin Costner. Oh. I think it, was, it was Kevin Costner. And we, at that moment, I just walked on to the set and I was like, this is what I want to do. And my friend introduced me to the hair and makeup team and the trailer. And I went in the trailer and the, everybody was so nice. And I was like, this is what I want to do. This is exactly what I want to do. So it's like one of those moments in your life that, you know, when you just all of a sudden, it's like a light bulb, you're like, that's what I'm doing. Mm. So in beauty school is when I decided that this, I wanted to be in TV and film. And so I just started, you know, doing what I needed to do to get myself to LA. So so, you're in, so you're in Seattle, you're, you're in hairdressing school you get an invite, you meet, uh, you go to meet and, and, and see the set, et cetera. And now, okay. That, that was your pivotal moment. Yes. This is where I, I know what I, I know what I'm going to do. I, I see my path. Yeah. But so from that point on, what, what happened there? Now, Cause I'm sure everybody knows or everybody says, Oh, I want to, it'd be, be amazing to be Hollywood stylist and, and, and get there. But there had to be a path. How did you, how did you, I don't know of any school that teaches it. So yeah. how did you prepare yourself for that? How did you get there? Well, okay. So I knew being a hair and a makeup artist was essential. 
Um, Cause I, by talking to the hair and makeup people in the trailer, they did tell me that it's a union and there's a hair, you know, you can be hair or makeup, not both. Um, but you being a freelance artist, you want to be able to know how to do both. Do both. It, I mean, you're kind of, it's, it's a, to your advantage because a lot of people want to hire one person to do hair and makeup. So I went to Vancouver film school um, and I drove once a week up to Vancouver and went to makeup for film. And then I started putting together a portfolio, working and doing whatever I could with photographers. And back then we actually had a portfolio. So mm -hmm. you'd have to get the big pictures and your book. And so I started preparing that. And then also um, any small film that came into town, I worked for basically nothing and just to get the experience and did all of that hard work. So it took me about six years from the moment that I decided to do that to move to LA because I knew that I was preparing for an opportunity and I wanted to make sure that I was um, capable, you know, with oh, hair, yeah. makeup, my book, ready to go. And so when I finally moved to um, LA, it was 2001, right after 9-11. And so... I, and honestly, I almost didn't move then because I thought, who, that's just a crazy time to move and to a big city like Los Angeles. But I went for it anyway. And I started working for Rudy's Barber Shops, which originated in Seattle. Yeah, so yeah. I found somebody who knew um, the owner and I contacted him and he hired me and I started working on Sunset in the Barber Shop. And I was also working for Bobby Brown Cosmetics in Century City Mall. So I was like putting my skills to work. That must have come in really handy because I know you also do like doing work for um, for uh, the sh uh, Shark Tank, etc. You know, you got a lot of male yeah. hair that you do there. As set, and I'm sure on set you have yeah. to be diverse. You can't just know one genre. Well, especially, no, that's very important. And honestly, working four years in the barbershop was a, a absolute, like, uh, as far as getting my speed um, mm -hmm. that's needed on set, I was trained under um, an American crew hairstylist for educational purposes. I think my men's haircutting is really good. <laughs> so, how's, your, how's your fade going on now? They Well, here's the thing. I did take some private classes um, yeah. within the last four years, five years. Well, I guess, I mean, the pandemics before the pandemic. So like 2018, 19, I took some private classes um, with Stacey Cutts, who's Stacey Morris. She's a Hollywood barber who's amazing, mm -hmm. does a lot of big people. And um, I knew that I needed to learn um, textured hair, even though no one's going to want me to cut their hair that's a black singer or, yeah. um, you know, they, they just don't want me yeah. cutting their hair, but I will tell you what, if my barber doesn't show up, I'm going to do it yep. and it's going to take me longer and it won't be as crisp, but it will get done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, it's, it's, that's there. I mean, and, and I think that's like, I always, I always look at from the hair side of it, I think we're in this swing right now where there's a lot of women's hair that are really long and, you know, and their balayage and all the great things that are going on with it. But the real cool shapes that are going on are men's haircuts right now with all that going on. I, I just think that that's just, you know, I've always been a short hair freak my whole life, you know, and I love that, but it, it's, it's a, there's a different game. And I, so I want to, uh, um, what is kind of the, first of all, in film, there, there's, I know from your portfolio, you've been a, you've been the hairstylist on the set. You've been the key stylist and you've been the department head just for, for the listeners and the people watching right now, what d define them for us? What's the difference between okay. those three uh, positions? Well, well, first of all, I didn't start out where I'm at. Um, I was, you know, day playing, which is somebody who's called in for extra heavier days and, Positions. and you bring your kit, you know, your basic irons and brushes and combs and things and, and products and doing background and whatever I was needed to do. Um, I got hired on the voice in 2011 
as an additional hairstylist, um, which is somebody who's just, I'm here to do a job, right? What do you mm-hmm. want me to do? And then by season three, the key hairstylist. So in any sh- like uh, production, there's usually, not always, but usually the hairstylist team, the key and the department head. So I like to put it like this. The department head is like the president. The yeah. key is like the vice president. Then there's your team. So um, I'm usually in charge of, so I started, sorry to backtrack, but season three, I then be, had the opportunity to be the key hairstylist. So the key is usually the one that keeps the department head stylist um, organized and in the know and communicating between you know the teams and any information, just really helping out the department head because the department head is usually doing most of the communication with uh, production, producers, the network, um, and um, designing, you know, yeah. and making sure that the looks are achieved. So it's it kind of like that, at least on my shows. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's that's really interesting. I'm I, I'm trying to equate it because like I've I've never worked on a on a on a movie set or on a TV set before, but I worked on, you know, and corporate, corporate photo shoots, et cetera. And you, you have your corporate heads and then you have somebody that's the link that, so that you're creating the vision. And then you have somebody who's managing all the people that are doing it. And so you have a key there and then you have the, the people that are doing the hair and there's gotta be a cohesiveness of what's the look from the top all the way down. So everybody's nobody's scrambling on stuff. Is that, is that a fair assumption? For sure. But it's also, um, you have to think about makeup and the wardrobe. Um, and so it's a collaboration, you know, among usually the, you know, wardrobe designer, the makeup department head and myself, you know, on the voice, um, we absolutely try and communicate. We have fallen in um, situations where it's like so much wardrobe, so much makeup, such big hair. And it's like, oh my God, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Is, is so. there, is there like, so get, walk, you know, like, a, I want to find out a couple things here. Like, number one, what's a tip? What was a, what's a typical day like on The Voice? And then I suppose uh, is like after that, what, what do you do? Like, you've got a routine, but then what do you do when a screw up happens? When, like you say, it's everything's there all at once. And you, is there, a, do you have to make changes and what happened? Are they done in a hurry? Well, it, okay. So a typical day on the voice, um, we usually uh, do a lot of pre-taping in the summer um, mm-hmm. of the, the blinds. Then we do shoot the battles, the knockouts, then the playoffs, and then we shoot the lives live. Yeah. So um, it's a little bit different. So when we're pre-taping things, Um, we don't really have much changes. So if the person walks out the way they're going to walk out, that's usually how they're going to be seen. Because during the live shows, we'll get them ready. We'll have dress rehearsal. We'll be able to make changes if it doesn't look good or something needs to be tweaked a bit. And then we shoot the lives, the live show. So from five to seven. So you kind of, you have that, you know, it's, it's, like episodics and and film and stuff, you can make tweaks and changes because you all of a sudden you have the, you see them on camera and and the director or somebody's like, Oh, that's not going to work. We need to change your hair. Uh Right. So So how long would you have? Like if somebody says, okay, the department head comes down and says, Hey, I I mean, I I know it. I, you know, from working corporate, they'll, they'll come up and they say, it's nice, but uh, what about this? And do they give you that or they give you direction or they just say, Hey, I'm not sure. I'm not really keen on it. What would you do? How does that process work? Okay. On The Voice, I have a creative producer that's yeah. a, my direct link. Um, and she might, usually everything comes out fabulous because yeah. we've been doing this for so many seasons. But And she really believes in um, my creativity and um, collaboration. So there's not much of that going on. Occasionally, she will, you know, say, hey, so-and-so is going to be in this outfit. I think her hair should be up. And then I will usually send her inspiration photos of what I think would happen. And then I talk to the artist who's singing and say, hey, what do you think about this? Because the collar on this dress or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know. 
like that. So it's, but it's not too much of that. Got it. Do you, so like, is there, I'm, I'm sure that you, you've, you probably have talent that's coming on that they're just so excited to be there that it's whatever you say goes, but do you have people that will, you know, they'll, they get their own tweaks and they want, they want what they want and they balk right. maybe at anything. Does that happen? A hundred percent. Um, especially these days with, um, you know, all of the social media, all, everybody's a makeup artist and everybody mm -hmm. is a hairstylist these days too. And, you know, a lot of people have had time, especially if you're a performer and I encourage like learn everything you can yeah. during your time with us on the voice, because I want you to go out in the world and I want you to look amazing. You know, just like anybody who sits in our chair in the salon, it's like, we want to teach them how to blow dry their hair or curl their hair so that they can look great on their own. Um, it's the same thing on the voice, but everybody does come in usually with a way that they do their hair or makeup. And then once they trust us, usually during the battles, knockouts, they'll allow like more like, Hey, I really think we should blah, 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 you know? And then they're like, all right, whatever you think, Gerilyn. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it is, it really, it's just the same as a salon, isn't it? It's trust-based. Mm -hmm. You know, and they've got to know they once they figure out you've got their best interest at minds, because could you just talk to a to minute for people out there? Because I I think that there's a correlation between what you do on set, because like, on TV, hair looks different in real life than what it does on your on your TV set. It's the same as like a photograph. Everything gets, you know, like everything is a bit smaller than you really think it is. And so talk to us a little bit about that. What 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 do you? Like there's got, there's differences and what, what is the differences that you have to apply when you're doing hair for television? Well, movie? for our, well, for instance, for the voice, um, our backlighting on the stage is insane. It yeah. literally yeah. drives me crazy half the time because every single fly away from the back, I don't know why. I mean, it's gorgeous lighting, gorgeous, 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 but you see every single flyaway. So if somebody wants big curly hair, like Diana Ross and like, you know, super eighties that I love, but I always tell my stylist and the contestant, we need to control the top layer. Yeah. The perimeter like, all the way around all of this as big as you want, but then let's go through and we want to control all of this fuzz on top. And then I tell the contestant, when you're getting nervous and you're like fidgeting with your hair all the time, you need to not touch that top layer. Like, I want you to just like go under, how about not even touch your hair? Okay. <laughs> After we've touched it, just don't touch. But if you do, if you feel like you have to make sure it's not the top layer. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, just go on stage, pick your nose instead, you know, yeah. it'd be so much easier. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but as far as like other like films and things that I've been on, um, you know, generally it's mostly natural hair too. So like if yeah. you, you, know, you, you look at like Jennifer Aniston, her hair is always very natural in her movies mm -hmm. and you know, it just, that's the way she is. You always know Jennifer's going to have some flyaways and it's not going to be perfect. And you know, that's, I can appreciate that, but it also like, I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> because, yeah, because I'm to it. Yeah. And, and, and it's also, I mean, just anecdotally is that um, I know we did, had to do a whole segment at symposium where we had to do that friends thing where we had, I think we had whatever it was like 14 or more people that we all had in Jennifer Aniston wigs from the, you know, looking like the original, and, uh, and so we were, you know, we were sick of it then we were sick of it now. And then now we notice that we're, it's coming back in again. And I'm going, Oh, good God, please tell me that I didn't have a part in bringing that back. Uh, anyway, that aside, there, but there is different when you're working with music, like music tends to be a little bit more pushed. It, the hair can get a little bit more, the, the clothing is a bit more than, than movie where you're trying to, you're trying to make look like it happens everyday life. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, we're performance looks constantly, yeah, yeah. right? Um, 
even during the reality type band auditions that they do on camera, I try and tell my team like not too much, not too much. But then yeah. all of a sudden the contestant or the artist is like, Oh, but I would like this. And, you know, and then sometimes we get so excited that we want it. And then I'm like, that was too much. <laughs> yeah. And is that because you want to build a progression in the show? Is that the, that's the rationale? Yeah. 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 The blinds, literally, I want them to be them. Like the yeah. blinds, they come in hair and makeup done. We do a polish up. Um, we shoot that three days in a row, like three days of shooting for that one day. Um, cause they'll have their interview, they'll have their, um, friends and family interview, then they'll have their blind audition. So three different days, they have to look same. So, um, that, you know, can change slightly, but not too much, but we want them to come as they are so that we don't create somebody they aren't. Right. Right. So, so, so the, the, um, how long, how, you know, just at, and again, just. I think everybody sees this one hour episode and if you got a good eye, you can see that, that the judges sometimes are wearing different outfits. So you know that this is taking over an extended period of time, not just on that hour, but how long, so how, what's the day like, like, are you, when you start, like, when do you start in the morning? If you're shooting the blinds for say, mm -hmm. if you're shooting the blinds, what, uh, when do you start and how long and how many contestants do they go through in a day? Well, we usually start around a hundred contestants for a season of blinds yeah. and we'll, we'll put it through like four days of interview. So about 30, 20 to 20 to 30 each day. Yeah. Um, it will depend on how many minors there are as well, because they're on a time crunch. Yeah. So yeah. we'll shoot about 20 to 30 people per day there. And then the other days um, of the, the interview, uh, I'm sorry, the friends and family interviews and things like that with Carson, um, that could be staggered over just a couple days where we're really producing them out quickly um, because it's more of a big room of that they need to fill. Um, but the blind audition day, their actual day that they've come for or came for is... Um, we usually start around 7 a.m. And to get through, gosh, I think it's about 20 people a day. Yeah. yeah. Um, and 18 to 20. And then they start shooting around 1230. So we'll get through like a first group. We usually have three groups. So we'll get through a first group and then they'll start like more reality like jitters oh i'm so nervous i'm about to go out and literally they're going to go out like four hours later and then the yeah, next yeah. group comes in we get them ready they do that and then they start the show and then we get the third group after lunch and send them out that's awesome and and because i i hear from uh, on a movie set that movie set you might be starting at three or four o'clock in the morning because they're going to be shooting and then you make changes all day so this is a bit different where you've got your block of time you can work that through how many people would like when you're, when you're the department head and you're working on say the blinds or whatever, and you've got 20 people coming in, how many staff do you have working there? I'm, I'm, I'm talking more from a hair perspective. Yeah, no, I usually get about four people um, in the morning, like in, we have different. Okay. So we have a location that we get everybody ready. And then we have an on stage last looks person. Got so it, I usually it. get like four people in them, you know, to get them ready. And that usually consists of a barber, myself, my key, and then usually somebody who specializes in textured hair. Um, so I'll usually have us four and then I'll have somebody at stage who is, um, can do all textures of hair and yeah. for their last looks. Yeah. They're doing yeah. finals before they walk on yes, there. And I always tell my team, I'm like, first of all, last looks is the most important person. Okay. The most important person. You are the last person to see these people, no matter what we've done in the morning, they've been through interviews and walking around and going to the bathroom and eating lunch and, so they're the, really the most important person before they hit the stage. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. The, um, so the, uh, and like we've been talking about, and we're probably going to be jumping around a little bit here, but I just, the, you've worked on many sets, but how is there a, is there much of a difference from show to show? Like when I know when you're on the, on the voice or, uh, I'm sure there's probably, there's a little bit less work to do on Shark Tank, et cetera, because there's not as many people. Sure. Or how does that work? Is it? Yeah. I mean, uh, it depends on the show. I mean, obviously yeah. Shark Tank, I, it, our busy time is like from 7 a.m. until 9. That's when we're getting all of them ready. Um, and then it's just a touch up in between each pitch, you know, each on, entrepreneur, um, and then like the show legendary that I had for a couple seasons, it has not come back, um, was probably my most creative fun show. It was like an LGBTQ plus we had many, um, wigs, performance wow. looks and incredible. I learned so much. I mean, our whole team just learned so much on that show and like taught ourselves how to make a wig stay on a bald head and have them right. do a head drop. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like insane or it was so much fun. I wish it would come back. So what did you about that, that? Now you got my curiosity up. How, so, I, cause I've worked with wigs. I've worked with bald caps. I've worked with wigs on bald caps and they haven't had to do head tosses and so on. And I know what I've been taught to do. How would, what were you taught to do? How do you keep the wig on a bald head? <sighs> well, um, we figured out, this is going to, I mean, this is our technique and we actually took a bandage, put little drops of the glue for skin around, wrapped the ACE bandage around, and then glued the ACE bandage to itself. Then we would put the wig on and put, uh, I'm sorry, then put the wig cap and then put the wig on and then we would take roller pins the long ones yep. and crisscross them underneath the, the, the ace bandage the ace bandage through the wig crisscross lock them in and this is what i always tell people every bobby pin you put in someone's hair or head has to have a purpose yep. don't just shove them in because that does nothing yeah. Especially because we do a lot of dancers too on our yeah. show. Every bobby pin has to have a purpose, like lock it together. Yeah. And so, yeah, going up underneath the ace bandage, crisscrossing them all the way around their head, and then putting some pins through the cap It's as, as well. I mean, it was unbelievable. I think we lost just one wig off a head. Yeah. I remember, I remember we, had, uh, I remember doing a, a, a show, we were in Vegas and we had all these wigs on and we had a whole team of people that were, um, that you had to put the wigs on and we told, we, we talked, look at, here's where your pins go. Cause we have to make three, we have three minutes to make a change on hair, makeup and wardrobe before they go back on again. So everybody's got to know where the pins are, how they come out of the head. And I remember. I remember they we had the dancers going through this rigorous dance routine and we had just like normal wigs on. They weren't anything that had tremendous amount of weight, but I just remember she did her first head toss and the wig ended up in the audience. And the first thing we turned around went, who put that wig on? <laughs> it's just, it's devastating. It's devastating as the, as the production team. I mean, I have to say that the time that it did come off, it was like probably I had never seen so much spinning and head throwing and like dropping to the floor. And I was just like, Oh my God, it, it, there's nothing you can do about yeah. that. The sign of the no- cross I find works on occasion, but not always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember yeah. with, with the wig, the, we had, well, we had models that were coming in and we had, we had made these, uh, it was like bald caps that we had on the heads. You know, I know I, there's probably a, a technical tame, na- uh, name for them, but I, which I've forgotten, but bald caps. And we had an amazing uh, um, uh, makeup crew that could put them on, match them to the face. They were phenomenal. But we had to put mohawks on them, you know, so it wasn't like we, we couldn't show like ace bandages, etc. And so we're trying to figure out how the hell do we keep this mohawk or these pieces on when you, you, you still want part of the bald cap showing. 
And so uh, somebody told us uh, that we had uh, 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 carpet tape. So we, we used, uh, it, you know, the two-sided carpet tape that you use for putting your floor down. And we tried that. And then it, uh, and the carpet tape wouldn't stick to the latex. So, yeah. and then we, and I can't remember, we, somebody had finally got a glue type that we could glue latex to these pieces. But the, I mean, by the time we were done, the, the piece, the hair piece was wrecked because you had to, you literally had to glue the piece onto it. So the bases were all wrecked, et cetera, but they stayed down, thank God. So we're still searching for the perfect way to do it. But I think everybody has to just go, don't you, you everybody's got to go through that learning experience 100%. and you have to have the screw ups that happen. And so you can find out what works and what didn't work. Well, and you know that, I mean, speaking of which, you know, how we get asked, I mean, in our industry to do so things that you're like, I've never heard like, okay, when I get asked by a producer or something like, here's what we want, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, no problem. And then I'm like calling my, what are, okay. What the hell? How are we going to do this? Okay. And then we just like all start collaborating and then somebody's got this idea and then we're like, we're like, yes, that's okay. Let's try that. I mean, that's exactly what we did on legendary too. I mean, yeah. it's just like, how are we going to do this? Oh, so-and-so they said that they did something, blah, 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 you know? And so, yeah, I mean, it, I made, and then another situation was we want our wigs to look like rubber, like a wood, yeah. rubber wood. Um, so like a marinette doll. And I was like, oh, okay, no problem. And then, um, you know, Amazon had some rubber wig stuff, like the Superman or whatever. And I'm like, that's not going to work. So my um, my key, Kimmy Messina, her and I went to props. And we're like, hey, do you have any ideas? We need to make this wig, say it was a red bob, yep. look like wood or rubber or something and he's like what about um oh my god uh i just lost the it, it's from the craft store um but Modge we, Podge? what Mod podge yes Mod yeah. Podge. so what we did first is we wet the wig we put ky jelly and got to be glue got the shape, right? Then we wanted, then we used the Mod Podge. I mean, this is several hours of drying and yep. a couple of days it took it per wig. So then we Mod Podged it and it was gorgeous, gorgeous. We yeah. did like four or five wigs like that. Oh my God. But that's what it takes. It's like the collaboration and the, and the guy and yeah. props was like, make sure you don't put this on the styrofoam. It's going to melt it. And yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't, that's what I don't, I think that most people don't understand, including probably people that are asking for it, is that and we always say that like 75 to 85% of your time in order to get a look is research on how to do the damn look. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you, you know, like I, we've always said for the, for, the, and to me, I'm, I'm the avant-garde guy. I just love avant-garde. I love making pieces and wigs and, and such. And I, and, but if people don't understand how long it takes, like some wigs that you make might take you like four or five days just to figure out how to do it. And then you got to make the wig. So do you think that, do you have an easier time doing that on human hair or synthetic? Oh, well, it depends for me. I like, if I'm working with, with, um, uh, I, like I did, I just did a shoot and I just wanted to, I wanted to, I used the, um, um, you know, it's called hoarfrost, you okay. know, uh, it, it, it's like what you see on trees. It looks crystallized, et cetera. Yes. And, and I find that way, I mean, you, yeah, you could do it with, with, uh, real hair, but it's really expensive. Right. So we just use, obviously from a budgetary standpoint, we just use fake hair. It's already colored. It's already the, the shape you want it. And you can still, there is ways of coloring it with, uh, with ink. Uh, it's called uh, ink. Uh, uh, it's an ink dye that you can actually color um, synthetic hair with. But we, you know, I just, we just cut it up. And then I found, and it's like you said, the prop guys, we found the, the, we had to glue it together with, we did it with hairspray, sprinkle it on hairspray, sprinkle it on. And we tried glue that you can use this, the spray glue. 
yeah. and it and it it spits, so you get these lumps in it. And and a friend of mine uh, who works with, works on movie sets, he said, look, he went to the prop guy and he said, we use this this glue that you can get. It's called what three six nine three five nine or something like that. I can't remember the numbers, but you can get it at Ace Hardware. And that's what the prop guys make all the fake buildings out of that they blow up. And so oh. we use that and you can spray it on hair. It glues it in place and it doesn't spit as much. You get the occasional one, but it doesn't hold it rock hard, but you can take really delicate things and now move around in them. So that's it's fun. Yeah. It, it, uh, it, to me, that's, that's my life. I just, that's where I, it's my therapy. I love doing right. that. Well, yeah, I, so, found, oh, I was just going to say, I found for performance type looks, yeah. I find yeah. synthetic wigs so much easier yeah. Yeah. to work with because they hold the style. Yeah. 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 Synthetic is, and it's always fun and less expensive, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and once I, you learn how to style it, it's a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. So, Cause you got to use, you got to use heat or steam or uh, not, uh, sorry, heat makes you think that you're using a curling iron, but you got to use, you know, steam and things as such yeah. that, that set them. We, and like we'll use, when we have to make curl, we'll buy the curly hair and then we just wrap it around doweling or whatever we to make whatever shape. And we just throw it in a bucket in like, we just get a bucket with boiled water. We yeah. pour it in there and then we just throw the, throw the piece in there and then take it out, run under the cold water and let them dry. And you got whatever shape you want. And it's just yeah. ph phenomenal stuff to work with. And I, to me, that's what, when you have to work with a medium, that's not what you're used to. That's what really pushes you. And right. I think that's what makes it fun. You know, because you're trying to figure stuff out that hasn't been done before. And I think that's, to me, that's why, that's why I take my hat off to some of the stuff you do, because it's phenomenal. Thank you. This episode is sponsored by the Salon Associate Accelerator from trainersplaybook.com. Are you struggling with the time and cost of associate training? Do you feel like your salon is running you? We'll get your associates on the floor, all with 90% less time from you so you can get back to building your business. Get them world-class design, finishing, color, and client care skills they'll use every day for the rest of their career while you focus on realizing your vision. Go to trainersplaybook.com and get the Salon Associate Accelerator. And now, back to the show. So fun. So, so back to this. So, And, and I want to go back to kind of the the show as an overall, you know, and, and I want two things is that it, can you, can you tell us about some of the things that like a screw up that happened or something that went wrong or something you had to fix, or it was something on a show and you got that scramble that you have to do at the last month, last minute, any of those kind of things that come up that come to I, your mind all the time. Right. I mean, are we talking about just any show? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So the, the stuff that we can pull out of our just like boxes, right? It's like you, oh my gosh, this one time, um, the at, on Legendary, there was a um flamingo, she wanted uh -huh. she wanted to be a flamingo, and so, but the wardrobe stylist for some reason was like, I have to make the, the flamingo the headpiece. I was like, okay, all right. Well, the headpiece is not equipped to be doing backdrops and things like uh -huh. that. And um, she was like, I can't wear this, Gerilyn. You have to help me figure something out. And I was trying to figure it. I'm like, ah. Oh. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. I'm like, I have a feather wig. I have a feather wig. And I'm like, oh, it's right here. And I'm like, okay, shake it out. Okay, put it on. Spray it pink. And then we're going to add some like crystals and then da, da, da. and we did that all in like 20 minutes and then no way. on the head, pinned it in. And oh my God, she loved her, her hair, her feathers. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like stuff like that just makes yeah. me so excited to just like, I mean, I literally have a store of like wigs and gems and stuff for the hair just because you know years and years and years you accumulate a lot of yeah. stuff so it was just amazing that was super fun um on the voice um a funny moment was 
there was um, a top knot bun thingy that one of my hairstylists did. And um, as the, the, her, her performance, she's bouncing and jumping and bouncing. And the thing keeps getting bigger and bigger and taller and taller and taller, like Marge. <laughs> from the Simpsons. And I was like, oh, we just, we have a, a sourdough loaf of bread on her head. <laughs> but you know, it's, stuff like that you have to laugh about. It's yeah. just, you know what? We're not perfect. I mean, I try and make every single episode that we shoot, no matter what it is, I want it to be a nomination. Right. Yeah. Like I want everybody to think like that. Like I want it to be as perfect as you can, but you know, stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, stuff is a good word and there's other words for it, but we'll leave it at stuff, you know? <laughs> and it, it's funny, you know, like I, I remember to this, to a point, I remember how that when you're talking about the hair growing and especially when they're doing a performance and, and, you know, we all know that when we're creating stuff there, they all fit together, the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, the the talent. But uh, I remember Sam Villa said this to me one time because I was saying, you know, sometimes when I go to do shows, I'll, I'll, I'll write down, what did I wear? And so I don't wear the same thing when I, when, if I go into a similar venue and he said, he said, you know what? He says, here's my philosophy is if, if, if you're wearing, if, if people are, can tell what you wore from one time to the other, then maybe you should pick up your game so that they're not looking at your wardrobe. They're listening to what you say and what you do. <laughs> oh, That's good true. point. So That's hopefully the point. talent went on like gangbusters and then they didn't even notice the happen, the, the, the mess ups that happened with the hair. But that's uh, so now to that point though, now I want to take that back when they come, is there a time? Cause we always say as hairdressers, we've got all these hats that we wear and with the stylist and with a counselor and with a psychiatrist and, the marriage counselor and all of that kind of thing. Does all of that come into play when you're doing the, like you have several hats you have to wear as well, dealing with the talent that's nervous, dealing with the, uh, you know, if you're dealing with new people that you, uh, on your team that haven't, you haven't worked with before or whatever, is that, does that come into play? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, you know, to the younger minors, um, I'm kind of their second mom, you know, mm. away from home. And, um, you know, a lot of kids deal with anxiety and I have a 16 year old as well. So it's like, you know, ha working with these teenagers and stuff and, and all, you know, social media and everything that they go through. Um, I'm just kind of there for, I've got lavender oil, I'm like here, I want you to relax while I do your hair, just take some breaths, you know, cause you, you, that happens, right? Mm -hmm. like, I just want to like squeeze on them and just tell them you're great, you know, don't worry. And, um, as far as my team, like I'm always ready to set you up for success. Yeah. So why are, you know, we had a new, um, hairstylist during our lives. That's, um, a daughter of, one of my seasoned hairstylists that I've had on the show. And I just told her, I'm like, listen, you can curl hair. You know what to do. Here's what we're going to do. I'm like, hey, everybody, this is so-and-so. She's never worked a live show. Let's, and so that we just all like lifted her and, and, and took, you know, it's yeah. like, that's what we do. We teach you. I yeah. want you to be successful yeah. because if you're successful, I'm successful. successful. You know? Yeah. Well, Congratulations, you know, because I, you know, I think that we've all heard and whether it's true or not, we've always heard about Hollywood and everybody has this thing about backstabbing, backbiting and, and trying to claw your way to the top. I, you know, and what I love what you just said there was like, is that you've got somebody new and you're supporting them and you're making sure that they grow. And, you know, I, I think that there's, you, you get so much farther ahead with some kindness and helping people than you do. Uh, with uh, making sure that they fail, you know, it's, uh, yeah. you know, congratulations and thank you for that. I just think it's, it's just admirable. I, I love that trait in people. I think that, you know, you are who you attract, right? Mm -hmm. Or you attract who you are. And I think that over the last, I mean, I've been doing the voice for like 13 years and congratulations. Like, Thank you. 25 seasons. So it's like over the time, it's like, you know, you just 
want to attract people who don't want to stab you in the back, who right. appreciate, you know, hey, you have, you know, I'm a mom, I have a son, he plays baseball, right? Yeah. If there's something I can do to help you get to where you need to go by a certain time, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and help you because yeah. this business is brutal. It's long hours. It Some people work five days a week or more. And it's like whatever we can do, especially as moms, right, to be able to just like, hey, go. Yeah. We're good yeah. now. Everybody's ready. We can have the touch-ups done. And you get to your kid's volleyball game, you yeah. know? It's, yeah. That, See that yeah. I'll cover you if you cover me, mm -hmm. you know, and I love that. What? So, but now just to give us some frame of reference for the voice. How many days out of the year? Because that it's it's what, what, how many how many sessions? How many I can't remember how many sessions that is. How many segments? Because a lot of shows are thirteen, but I think that one's way more than thirteen. Oh God, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, but how many days? So how many days out of the year would you be spending on The Voice? Just on that one show? Oh, okay. Well, we just started shooting two seasons at once last summer, and we're going to do it again this summer because, you know, they wanted to um, budget, right? Yeah. They wanted to save money. So they figured, let's just set up the blind stages once for both seasons that year, The then the battles once. And so what we did last summer, and I think we're going to mirror it about the same as we shot, you know, the blind auditions, it's usually per season about probably nine days per season. Wow. Uh, for the blinds. Um, and then the battles, uh, two reality days, two shoot days. So like four to five, I think, for the battles. It's not a lot of days. Oh, really? No. See, I, I was thinking, God, you must be there like, you know, three, four months working on this show then. Well, it is. I mean, we start shooting mid-June. Yeah. And then through the very beginning of October. Yeah. Um, but it's like not Monday through Friday. Right. You know, it's like we might have even a week off or two here and there. Um, and then we had seven weeks off from October, beginning of October till we shot the live shows in December. Yeah. So it's, it's not, it's not like every day. How and do you, how do you so you, I mean, this is, I mean, first of all, I have to say you're a machine because I mean, you, not only do you do that, you're an educator, you're a mom. I, I went on your website and I know you, I can make a, I can make a booking to get my hair done with you. So you're obviously in the salon. Where the hell do you get all the time? I mean, like I said, you're a machine. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of, well, I'm kind of transitioning. Uh, my career a bit into this. The film industry is kind of changing a bit. A lot of yeah. stuff is leaving. Um, and okay, so I'm 54. And I figure I have what, uh, 10 to 12 years left of, I'll never retire. I'll tell you yeah. that right now. I'm with but, you. but it's like, supposedly, like, basically my husband has nine years left in the business until we're like fully vested. So hands down nine years, we're, we're that's where we're going. Um, but it's like, I want to transition my career into hair thinning, hair loss. I'm an educator for Xenogen um, because I did, that's a whole story in itself right there. It's like my, I was, I'm also a cancer survivor. So it, that took me to a place of realizing Women need help yeah. when their hair grows back with their new textures, with scalp health. Like this has, you know, the, the worst thing in my life has now been the best thing in my life of taking that and, and really utilizing what I went through to help other women. And then going through menopausal hair thinning, COVID hair thinning, um, people are now taking injections for weight loss. They may not know it, but they're about to lose oh, their hair. Oh, really? And yes. There's so much hair thinning going on that 
uh, for me, I wanted to become an expert. And so the product line that I started working for now, I was like, what's a better way to become an expert is to become an educator, get educated by the best. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. And it's plant-based, which was really important for me with going through chemo and cancer and all of that. So yeah. that's can, where I'm headed. Can, can I take a, I want to take a step back on that. Cause mm-hmm. firstly is, I think that's something that everybody has been touched by. Mm-hmm. And, and I know you and I chatted a little bit about it just before we got on, uh, onto the, uh, um, recording, but the, did, is it, did I have it right? And when I, cause I went through some of your, your blogs and did you actually go through it twice where you had, was it twice you went through with hair loss, et cetera? Was or did I read that wrong? No, just once. once. Um, I went through six chemo sessions, yeah. uh, cycles and, uh, in my blog, I think what you might be thinking about is like, I have tips and tricks that I learned through chemo to help me with the pain and stuff and tiredness and whatnot. Uh, you get a metal taste in your mouth. Um, I realized early on, like, don't use silverware, get rid of my steel travel mugs, you know, the stainless steel on the inside. I got a glass travel mug and started using bamboo forks and knives and things like that and paper plates. And, and so it just, there's little tips that I would put in those that I discovered to share with other people. Cause some people don't realize like that metal taste, like just the fork you're using is like, ugh, produce. Yeah. Ugh. yeah. And um, I, I, first of all, I just want to congratulate you on that because I just think that the more people that can, I, you know, God bless. I've not had, I, I've not had it. I'm, I'm hoping that I don't, but God knows what it's got in store for me. But I love the fact that you blogged about it. And, you, and to me is that when you can go through that and you can help other people with it, I, I, I just think that's so admirable. <clears throat> and I, and I think, but did that happen? Did that, when you had ca- the cancer, did it, um, did that happen while you were working on set? Is it, wow. Yeah. I was on legendary, um, legendary which was the wig yeah. lgbtq plus um season two and three season one was in connecticut we didn't have anything to do with that so season two um it's such a busy show and i was working four days a week and it i thought oh i think i'm not drinking enough water or maybe i shouldn't hold my pee as long and because literally i'd be like two hours later going i gotta go to the bathroom And, you know, like I I have, I have to walk away. And so all of this body stuff was going on and, and bloating. And, um, then I started getting full really quickly and I was like, something's wrong. And in the middle of the night, these were were things that the prior that these were the things to take note of. (laughs) Yeah. These things are what put me to the doctor. Yeah. Know, um, and then had the ultrasound, the CT scan, realized I had cancer. Then the show ended. So the show ended, wrapped up, had my surgery the following week. So it was kind of like the last two weeks of that show, I realized that I had a mass in my abdomen. Um, and then when they we had the surgery, but here's the beautiful thing. When I went through chemo, I was on The Voice. So... Oh. In so I asked my doctor, I go, listen, okay, so I'm supposed to get chemo treatment this day. Now the voice starts on this day. I'm like, can we just push it a little bit? So he's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, because I need it to line up like this. And he's like, no. And I was like, okay. So the voice is family, right? Yeah. So everybody took care of me. I wore, you know, literally day 12 after my first treatment, hair started coming out in clumps. Um, I wore wigs to work. I had one that looked like my hair and which I actually didn't even wear that that much, but I wore a wig to work so that people didn't feel sorry for me. Right. You know, but I would take the the five days off that I didn't feel good. And my team just had my back. Yeah. Well, that's, that's nice about when you're working with the same people all the time, yeah. And you don't have to worry because you know that they can handle it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a really great show to be on during that time. I'm glad I was on the voice. Yeah. Cause I think you hear so much about that, that, 
what I it makes me like the show even more than I do because I'm a big oh. fan of the show. Um, yeah. But I, I and because to me it's about your team, but also I'm sure that corporate the the producers and everything must have known, and I'm oh, so yeah. happy that they, you know worked along and they allowed you to do that it's yeah they were just like whatever i'm like my doctor said you know working actually is healing if i love it and i love it so they're like whatever you need you know and and we were all in mass too this was 2021 so i felt really safe yeah you know that's good that's that's uh i'm really excited I'm, i'm really happy about that and i'm um the now and the if you had to give, I mean, I, I think that everybody always, how do I say this? Being involved, I'm involved in beauty schools as well. And one of the sell points that we have for the beauty schools right now is the fact of the industry and where you can go in our industry is so diverse. Mm-hmm. You know, you can go into so many things just right from session styling to, you know, uh, doing photo shoots to, you know, to film work. Now, yeah. But because that's, I mean, let's face it, if, if, if you had to talk about somebody that's an expert in that area, that's you. So if you had to say that there was, you know, whatever, three or a number of traits that you have to have, if you want to be a successful hairstylist in the Hollywood TV film game, what would you say that those were? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, always educate, keep educating. Yeah. Um, and then a big one that I tell any of my team, it's like, leave your ego at the door and, you know, come in. Let's, this is one of the only shows, the voice that, well, not the only, all my shows, we kind of do this, but like, we always are working. Like one head is not just one person's like you might have two or three people in on it and everybody's helping each other. So leave your ego at the door. Um, I think continued education, um, you know, especially I hate to say this, but as I'm getting older, I never want these younger 20s, 30s, you know, artists, contestants thinking like I'm the old lady or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I always want to be fast, like trending forward and what's new and never, never stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and another thing that I loved, I knew, I, I, I read you uh, something you said was, and, and I'm going to have to paraphrase because I don't remember it exactly, but you said that you have to be likable and, and that you, you can just, you're willing to do whatever it takes. And I think you alluded to that before. And when we, at the very beginning, when we talked about, oh yeah, no, that's no problem. Even though in the back you're screwing like crazy, trying to figure out what it's like is, is yeah. how, how important is that? To, I mean, to be likable, yeah, is everything. When you're working next to me for twelve hours, I gotta like you, mm-hmm. and I can teach you whatever it is, but I want you to be likable. I want you to be helpful. I want you to go beyond, um, you know, helping each other. Um, yeah, because everything's teachable. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you really are open to it. Yeah. And, and like you said, if you can leave the ego out of it. So if you're in a time crunch and you're having a, having a problem doing a head of hair, I think that's when you got to go look at, I can figure this out in an hour or two, but we don't have an hour or two. Can somebody, you know, to me, I always love it when somebody says, look, and I'm having a problem. Can you help me? And then you can get it done. hundred percent. I mean, that happened just like last season. One of my hairstylists was trying to do an updo thingy, you know, and, and she's like, she comes in to my, my area where I'm at. And she's like, Gerilyn, she's like, I, I don't know what's going on. It, I just, it's not looking good. I, I don't know what's going She goes, can you just do it? So I just went in there and it just took a sec as you know, a sec, anybody could have gone in there. Right. But I went in there and I was like, boom, 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 boom. Okay. What do you, do you like that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it just it needed second set of hands. Sometimes we just get like stuck. And yeah. you just yeah. have to like, be like, Hey, can someone over here help me? <laughs> yeah. It, Cause it, it's, isn't it true though? You, you can get to the point where you get it. I always call it. You're in your head, mm-hmm. you know, is if you're in yeah. your head, if you're saying this isn't going right and then it goes from bad to worse and you get in your head and you can't think of anything that 
you probably know to do because you get in your head as opposed to your heart. And, You're too and, and you come up and you go, oh, well, it's like this. And then number one, they fix it. Number two, they learn something, you mm-hmm. know, and um, and then number three, they the it, it worked at the end of the game. So yeah. that's it. Uh, first of all, I, uh, Jerry Lynn, I, I, uh, we've got to do two sessions here. I, I've got to have you back on because um, I haven't had a chance to talk about your book and I want to, I want, I'm going to talk about it just a quick bit here. And then I want to have you back on to talk about your book oh, uh, be because great. I think that is, uh, is so uh, it's what you talk about. And, and for, listen, for anybody listening, I just want to give you a quick read on this. Um, it's on Amazon. It's called the the five F words F words to manifest your your life. And and here is what some of the people had to say about the book. Every page locks unlocks a mystery. Most meaningful eighty three pages I've ever read. Here's another one. The book that makes you feel like you can do anything. Here's another one. A true must have to light a fire in you. And I so I want to have you back on, and I want to do and I want to talk about the book because we haven't had a chance to do it do you know yeah. it's it's well, worse can i can i just say real quick like yeah i'm not an author and the only reason why a book came about was because i started talking to beauty school students yeah. in 2019 and i i just about my career how i got to la just like what we talked about earlier um and then you know during my presentation um, I'd be like, you got to figure out what you want. You got to focus. You got to fear, you know, take fearless action, feel it existing and faith. My five F's. Right. Yeah. And it was them saying, I felt so inspired after you spoke. And I, do you have a book? Do you have something that like they needed more? Right. And Normally, like in my book, I'll say, you'll hear it two, three times. You know, you need to do it. That's like the universe saying you got to do it. This took five because I'm like, oh my God, I'm not an author. Um, So that's how it came about. And I actually um, hired, do you know Suzanne Mulroy? She worked for Malay for many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She helped me um, put together my keynote for the five F's. And so when I was ready to write the book, her and I wrote it together. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. She was my writing coach as she yeah. would Well, say. I want to have you back on because I want to talk about that. And um, I'm just, I want to wrap up this session just with our kind of our rapid fire. Um, just, and just so I'll, I'll throw it, throw it out and um, just whatever comes to your, your mind, one word, two word, quick sentence answers. Okay. Okay. Um, What turns you on in the creative process? Challenges. Mm. And what stifles it? Uh, Not having a team with me. Mm. Most, uh, a thing in your life that you disliked the most, just in life in general. Hmm. I don't know. A thing I don't like in well, I don't like COVID and I don't like politics. <laughs> Me neither. Okay. <laughs> and then a thing in, in life that you love the most. Oh, my family. I oh, love my Oh, bingo. My faves. Um, most difficult time in your life? I, I'm going to say it was uh, the diagnosis with cancer. Yeah, I can only imagine. Um, thing that you uh, you uh, dislike the most about our industry? The backstabbing mm. and people who aren't on our wavelength. <laughs> yeah, bingo. And uh, you can tell my era and, and how old I am if you're just listening by the mere fact that I said bingo. Um, <laughs> thing that thing that you uh, that you like most about our industry? Oh, I love the collaboration, the artistic um, creativity. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just, I'm going to swing back to one thing that we talked about earlier. What I love about our industry is how we have people in our industry that guard everything and they won't tell the secrets. And then other people that are an open book, just like we talked about, here's the yeah. things that I did. And what I love about our industry is how other people, you know, if you've got a problem, you can go to somebody else in our industry and they'll just give you the answer for it. And you go, God, thank you so much. That was right. amazing. Yeah. Um, a living person 
that you admire the most? Oh my gosh. I'm sure there's many, but just one that comes to mind. Well, Sam Vila, right? I mean, he is amazing. Yeah. Mr. Villa is the man. Um, Proudest moment of your life? Kicking cancer's ass. Mm, I love it. There's another F word we can do with cancer. Yes. Um, Okay. Person that you wish you could meet, living or dead? Oh, that's so hard. Yeah. Who, how about you? Oh, I can make that happen. I can make that happen. (laughs) I can make that happen. And I'll trade you because one day I'd love to either be, uh, not, you know, help you on a set or when you're doing a wig, you know, how can we trade off on, on, uh, on learning from one another? That would be like a real, that would be heartfelt for me. Or an education class that you're doing. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you an invite when we have our next Chris camp and, um, and it's also on, on facilitation, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I'm going to get you, you can come out and, uh, and see that I'll make that happen. Um, something that people don't know about you. Hmm. Oh my God. Okay. Um, Cause pretty much I'm an open book, but I'm super insecure about mm. my body in menopause. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think, you know, I think insecurity, whether it's about that or other things, I know I'm basically insecure. I, I think that in our industry, especially when you're in the limelight, I think you, uh, insecurity is very easy to come, but let me ask you this. Do you ever get him? Impo- this is just side note. Do you ever mm-hmm. get imposter syndrome? Uh, yeah. 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 There's a lot of times where I'm like, what makes me think that I can be doing this? Right. Yeah. And, yeah. but yeah, it's like, well, but you can I, somebody That's else will do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the point is at the end of every time you ask yourself, just say, but I can. That's the point. Mm-hmm. Okay. Month off. Where would you go? What would you do? Ooh, Italy. Mm, my fave. Where? Yeah. Yeah. Hands down. Oh yeah. Where, 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 where in Italy do you like the most? Mm, I love Florence. Oh, frenzy. I love it. it. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful there. I, it's one of my favorite pieces in the world. My wife and I just said, what, that's one place we'd always want to retire, have a vineyard, not make the wine, just drink it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Your greatest fear. Hmm. I guess not being, oh God, is this bad? Not being as successful as I want to be. And you're an A-type, aren't you? But that means like in helping and making the biggest impact that I can with women. Yeah. Leave your legacy. Yeah. Yeah. You do some of that already. I've seen seen that in what you do and the causes that you're for. Okay. Um, favorite curse word. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. And uh, cancer after that, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Your, your favorite, your favorite comfort food. Oh, 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 favorite comfort food. I love, oh my God. I love anything carb. So, um, mm. I'm going to say pizza. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good pizza though. Yeah. If, if if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I know. I know. Be better at tracking my finances and budgeting, oh. like, you know, in the, the apps and stuff. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm old school. And I need, I, I really wish I was better at that. Hmm. Your most treasured possession. Hmm. It's going to have to be my family. Yeah. My, I mean, yeah. are they a possession? No. Yeah. So I guess my home. Nice. Yeah. Nice. My home. 
something in the industry you haven't done yet, but you want to? I would like to department head a film, a big Ooh. film. Yeah, I love it. Well, talk to Lee at some time. He's got Lee, who you met, my son. He's uh, he's in film, and they're working on some. So Ooh. we'll set you up. Um, okay. One do-over in your life. And everybody always gives me, well, I wouldn't be who I am and all that. But if you could have one do-over in your life, what would you do? Oh, I would have invested in Starbucks in the 90s. Oh, yeah. And Apple. Um, and Apple. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow, you couldn't do hair. What would you do? Educate. Nice. Okay. So last, uh, last thing. What if you could have one wish for our industry? What would that be? And you could snap your fingers and it would be done. What would you what would you wish for? I guess no, um, the no backstab, like everybody is always collaborating and helping and lifting and sharing and, and, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Jerilyn, I just, I want to, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, don't you think we're getting better with that though? I, I think that, you know, I think that I, what I see, I think is because of this reaching out. I, I've found that I've learned more about other hairdressers in our industry, cross brand, cross, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Talents, like what you mm -hmm. do. Usually everything that we did back then, I just only hung around with people that I knew from my industry. They were, uh, they were either in the salon or worked with the company that I worked with, or I worked around. But I find so many people are that, that, um, uh, that, curtain that goes around you that separates you from other businesses I find is coming down and people yeah. are just talking to one another more, which I love. I think it's social media too. Yeah. And being able to like you and I right now. Yeah. Being able to see each other and talk to each other and yeah, the sharing part of it. Yeah. And I think that's the more that we can do to look at our industry as a whole, to make it better as a whole and as a group is uh is if that's the end game rather than look what i do and look what you do and i i just don't like that other stuff but yeah. uh jerry lynn i first of all um i think i found another new best friend whether you like it or not um <laughs> but i i just want to say from the bottom everybody listening and and um and watching right now i just want to say on behalf of them and me just want to thank you so much I am. Marjorie will be reaching out to you right away. I want to book another one with you so we can talk more about your book, et cetera. But I can't thank you enough for giving up your time uh, and your busy life uh, to be with us and to, and to share. Uh, I just can't thank you enough. Oh, I thank you for having me. I'm like so honored. Well, it was, it was a pleasure. And uh, listen, stay tuned. Everybody part Dukes. Part two is coming. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>